Hi, welcome to Rocket Realty Radio Show. My name is Pugal. I am a professional and an experienced real estate agent serving the Dallas Fort Worth area. In today's episode, I'm going to talk about hiring a contractor. So let's get started. Now, many uh, do, many homeowners during this time of the year are considering multiple home improvement projects. It could be either building a swimming pool or it could be an outdoor kitchen or a covered patio or on the inside maybe you're thinking of renovating your kitchen or flooring or your bathroom. Whatever your project is, you're going to hire a contractor. So in this episode, I'm going to talk about how do you go about defining the project and getting and hiring the right contractor to finish the job. So the first and the foremost is that you need to clearly understand and write down what you want to accomplish in the project. Okay. For example, let's say you are going to do a covered patio in the backyard. So you need to first understand, you know, how does your covered patio look like? For example, it is like a pergola where you have a lattice on the top or do you want it to be covered, okay, by composite shingles, that is number one. Number two, you need to decide on the area. Is it by 10 by 20 or is it 20 by 20 in size, right? So you need to define the size of your covered patio. Third, you need to decide, uh, decide on the electrical uh, that you need. For example, how many lights and how many fans do you need? Then fourth, you need to decide what kind of a flooring you need. Is it going to be concrete? Uh, or is it going to be an aggregate finished concrete? Or is it going to be stamped concrete? Or is it going to be tile, like a slate kind of a material, which is non-slippery in nature? So you need to dis define all this and write it down. Very, very, very important. Last but not the least is, is for these projects, do you need an HOA permit as well as a city permit? Most cities, when you do an exterior project, you know, you are likely to require an HOA approval as well as the city approval. But if the projects are interior inside the house, then you may not need those approvals. But it is very important for you to call the HOA and understand the permitting requirements. Okay. So at the end of this exercise, you should clearly know what you need out of this project in all detail, as much details as possible. Right. Now, once you complete that, then you need to look out for a short list of contractors. So how do you look out for contractors nowadays it is you know very simple you can start with uh, with your friends and relations who have done a similar project okay it's quite simple hey can you give me the phone number what is your experience that is one way to write down a list of contractor um, the second way is what i call referral sources when I mean referral sources, there are a lot of websites like Angie's List, GoodContractor.com, and Elk.com who provide a lot of contractors uh, that are local to that area. Now you can start looking at those contractors, you can start looking at the reviews of the contractors, and then you can go to their website and see how long have they been in, in business. They should be in business for at least five years. Okay, uh, that is my recommendations, right? So just look at for this, and then you wanted to make sure you know they have good reviews. You know, the end of this list, you're going to shortlist five contractor based on these research that you're doing about contractor, either from your friends as a source or from these referral websites. Okay, that is number two. Because the reason why that is important is because general contracting in the state of Texas doesn't need a license. Okay, for putting roof, which is like one of the most expensive projects um, that you will do, right? You don't need a permit uh, in the state of Texas. Therefore, you have to rely on customer reviews and the reputation of that particular firm. So, at the end of this exercise, you need to have a short list of five contractors. Now, once you have those contractors, now you need to start scheduling face-to-face -face interviews, right? 
So you pick up the phone and call them and schedule a date and time. Remember, good contractors will say, I'm happy to come to your place. It'll cost you $200, $150. You know, only good and great contractors will demand that payment because they value their time. So do not shy away from those people because they are very good. And in fact, most of them will credit that money if you give them the project. So the objective of face-to-face -face interview is to make them come to your property and then you need to take down your requirements that you wrote and consult, so consult with them saying, hey, this is the project. What do you think? And also a lot of these contractors have done many of these projects. They are going to give inputs to your requirements that you probably didn't even think about it. So you're going to gain and acquire and improve your requirements as you interact with them. So when you're on face to face, you're looking for a couple of things. You're looking to make sure they, uh, they have been long enough in business, you know, five plus years. Second, you want to make sure they are insured and bonded because something gets hurt during the job site. You don't want to be liable. So you want to make sure it is insured and bonded. Third thing is you want to make sure what kind of warranty they provide on the work. That is also very important. And uh, what is their experience working with the HOA and the city to get permit? That's also very important because each city will have different building codes. Uh, therefore, the contractor should have a good knowledge and experience on the city codes specifically for the exterior projects. And finally, you wanted to get a return estimate of the project work. That's very, very important. Okay. Why is it important? Because you're interviewing five different contractors and you wanted to get a detailed estimate of your project work so that you can compare who is giving not only good pricing, but also a good job in terms of construction quality, right? So that is a very good uh, way to compare. Now at this point, when you interview five different contractors, you get a very good idea who you wanted to do business with. Most likely, based on my experience, you will end up with top two contractors, right? So you will eliminate three and you will have two. And that's where you go to the stage of finalizing. Now, in finalizing stage, what you are trying to do is really negotiate terms and condition. In the finalization stage, maybe you wanted to ask the contractor, can I talk with one of your reference customers, right? So you can call a customer and check. And finally, you want to make sure everything is put into writing, right? That is very, very important because uh, as the project is progressing, if you have any disputes or disagreement, what is going to bond or what is one thing that is going to be common between you and the contractor is what is on the contract, right? So you want to make sure the contract is complete and it is signed by both you and the contractor. Now, in the contract will also contain payment terms. Most of the payment terms for these kind of projects is either three payments or it could be two payments. Okay, some contractors will demand anywhere from 30 to 50 percent before they begin the work. Okay, after you sign the contract and before they begin the work, they will demand payment in anywhere from 30 to 50 percent. So you will be ready to issue a check. Sometimes if you are financing it, then you need to work with the bank so that the bank will issue the check to the contractor. And then when the work is half complete or 60-70% complete, they will ask another payment of 30 or 40% and the remaining 10%, whatever is left over, is after the project is completed. Okay? Those are also defined in the contract and you want to make sure they are clearly spelled out. Then the work is going to progress and the city is going to come and inspect and uh, you know I always prefer for exterior project to get a permit because not only the contractor is doing the job but you are also making sure the city is inspecting the property. Not only that when it comes to reselling the property right the new buyer is going to look for these construction and make sure that it follows the city code and it has been permitted. So for future selling, you know, getting a permit becomes critical. 
folks um, you know a lot of these projects are very fun projects and a lot of these exterior as well as interior home improvement will add value to your property i hope you found this video to be helpful i do the show live each friday at 11 o'clock central standard time if you like the show please like me on my facebook page which is facebook.com forward slash rocket realty tx or subscribe to my youtube channel which is youtube.com forward slash c forward slash rocket realty tx thanks for watching